all. Okay. Yeah. So I'm replacing two cells in parallel with a single cell. So it's equal resistance related to R1 and R2 as, as reciprocals. And E equivalent by R equivalent equal to E1 by R1 plus E2 by R. So if you have more cells and can parallel, I can just assume this result. So here there is a third cell. Okay. E3, introduction are thrown up to N cell, N cell. N corresponding internal distance Rn. Okay. So this R equal will be so on up to 1 by Rn. It's like a parallel combination of resistors. And I have to add more terms here up to Vn by R equal. The same complex complexion I can make it here. If the polarity of any cell is reversed, this so V2 like this, if I have a V2 like this, this the terminal is reversed. It's as if we have a minus E2 here. We just have to put a negative sign here. One by R equal will not change. This is the same. We just have to put a negative sign here. So if the polarity is reversed, we have to take care of that. Okay. So we know how to connect cells in series and in parallel. So this is what I did last time. So, okay. so any doubts here? You can also check your book. Two cells in series uh, replaced by a single equivalent cell. So this is the final relation. One by R equal is it's like a parallel combination of resistors, right? In parallel combination, reciprocal of resistance will get added. In addition to that, here E equal is also getting added when starting gain. So E equal by R equal to be given by R equal by R2. So this I can extend to n cells. Okay. And if priority of the cell is reversed, E sign you change it accordingly. So this is cells in series and parallel. Okay. No doubts, right? So this is the next, uh, next, next topic. So it's called uh, Hirkov's rule. So this is like a junction where more than one wires are there. So in some wires, the current is entering and in some ways the current is leaving. Okay, so the current is entering in one, two, three it is leaving, four, five it is entering. Okay, leaving is six. So the total entering currents are one, two, four and five. And the currents that are leaving are three and six. So what we're saying, the current that's entering should leave. Summation of inflowing currents should be equal to summation of outflowing currents. In steady state, suppose this is not true means there will be accumulation of charge here. So once there's accumulation of charge here means Q is, Q at that junction is increasing as time is increasing. So that means Q is a function of time, right? So once I say steady state, nothing is changing in time. Go by dot of everything should be zero. So nothing should change in time. So whatever is going in should flow out. So this is basically junction rule. It's more like common sense, right? So sum of currents entering the junction or a node should be equal to sum of currents leaving it. This is junction rule. Second rule is loop rule, like a Suppose there is a circuit like this. Okay, let me, let me take a simpler circuit. See, there is a resistance R1, R3, R3, something to drive the current, which is the cell. Okay, of voltage C, B. Okay, so this is higher. The current will go in this direction, right? And, uh, so 
Suppose I mark this point as A and this point as B, this point as C and this point as D. So what this second rule says is the voltage drop from A to D, B stands usually for drop A to B. This voltage drop from A to B plus voltage drop from B to C plus voltage drop from C to D. This is one way of saying the thing, or I can say the sum of voltage drop across a closed loop is zero. So this is like a loop, loop in the sense of closed path. So this is a closed path, right? Starting from here, I can see I'm going around and then coming back to the same point. So this is a closed loop. So summation of the voltage drops across a closed loop is zero. So this if I Expanded it will come out to be like voltage drop from A to B plus voltage drop from B to C plus voltage drop from C to D plus the drop from here to here. This point is same as B because it's connecting wire, right? So whatever is the voltage is same as here. And this point is same as the point A only. Plus the voltage drop from B to A is zero. So you say it's like the same thing in a different way, like the drop from A to D, okay, should be same as the potential of these two points, that is same as the drop from along this path. So this is the, also I can say as yes, the drop along the closed path is the closed path. Is zero. The total drop for closed path is zero because whatever is the voltage rise which is driving the this is the voltage rise and whatever is the voltage which is driving the current here is dissipated here. So this is a drop. So if there's a ten volts of voltage rise, which is whatever is said, there'll be a drop of ten here. Okay. So if I take the total drop in this closed circuit. This thing is a rise, right? So there will be this will be a negative sign. The drop from D to E is minus 10, and the drop from A to B is plus 10. So if I add minus 10 and plus 10, I'll get a total drop as zero. So this is uh loop loop. Loop is any closed path in the circuit. Okay. Here there are multiple loops. Okay, the same thing I can extend. I can have a circuit like this. First resistance, second resistance, or third resistance. Okay, and uh, maybe I can have a cell here itself. I can also have something like this fourth resistance, fifth resistance. Okay, so this is R3, so this is R4, this is R5. So the current will also suppose I take this current as I1. Okay, here the current will be I2, and here will be I3. Okay, so at this point, if you use the junction rule, I get the relation I1 is the current that's flowing in, and the currents that are flowing out are. I2 and I3. So this junction rule. And here I can consider as two loops. The total is applicable for any loop. So I can take this as the first loop. Okay, loop number one. And this also a closed path. Any closed path is a loop. So this is second loop. So I can apply because to any to any loop. Okay. In the first loop, let the voltage difference here B. So I can write this B as I1 R1 plus so this is R1, this is R2, and this is R3, I1 R1 plus I2 R2 plus I3 R3. This is actually this drop plus this drop plus this drop. And this will drop here, not zero. So this I'll get in the first loop. In the second loop, if I do the same thing, 
I'll start from this point. The drop from here to here is I2 into R4. Okay. And again, I'm going in the direction of current. So here also there is a voltage drop. Plus, same I2 into R5. Here there is zero because connecting where there is no drop. So this is zero. So from this again, I'm relating. I'm getting relation. Hold on. I2. Oh, this is not a real circuit. No, suppose, if, suppose if it is like this, there has to be some resistance here. Otherwise, there will be this is like a short circuit. So an actual circuit would have some value of resistance here. It should be some resistance here. Because the resistance is not there, the current after reaching this point, the current after reaching this point, all the current will flow here itself because zero resistance, right? This the current here will be flowing here will be zero. That's how it is coming here. I2 is zero divided by R4 plus R5. That is zero. So the actual circuit will have some resistance here. Okay. So to close the circuit, I have to go around this path, right? So while going from here to here, I'm going against the direction of current. So here, going from where is my current? So going from here to here. There is a voltage rise of value. So that means minus I3 into uh, this R6. Because I used R5 up to here. So this is cell called R6 minus I3 into R6 equal to 0. The right hand side is 0. OK. So this is how it costs. Do pull is up to. Uh, return. So I can also apply the junction rule at this point. So give the same relation because the current flowing here is I1, current flowing out. The current entering here is I3. The current entering this way is I2. So the current total current entering here is I2 plus I3, which is the current leaving is I1, which is same as this relation. Which I got from writing the loop, uh, it comes junction to shear. Okay. So, here in this circuit, there is a resistance here, there is a resistance here. Okay, so here there are three loops. So, I can write the loop rule for the first loop, second loop, and the third loop. So this is an actual example where they are given the numerical values, 30 ohms, 40 ohms, 1 ohm, and 1 ohm. So here I can see one junction here, which is junction of current. Oh, first I have to mark the current. This current is I1, this current is, two, is different. Okay, need not be same because they are not in series. So this current is I3. Okay, so the current here is I, I1, I1. Okay, and the current here is same I2, and the current here is I2. So in terms of three currents, I can write I mean, once I know these three currents, I know current everywhere. So three currents are enough to find currents everywhere. Okay. So because the current flowing here is I3 towards here. And uh, okay. So one junction to like right at this point, the current entering is I3 and leaving are I1 plus I2. So have this relation I3 equal to I1 plus I2, this junction to that point D or junction A or node A. Okay. If I write the junction rule at this, at this point, I can say relation because here the current that's entering is I1, and this current is also entering I2, and the current I3 is towards left, so this leaving current. So entering currents are I1 plus I3, and the leaving current is I3, which is the same as this relation. So it's not a new equation I'm getting. So this, if I write at one point, it's enough. So this is nothing new, I get the same relation. Okay. But I have two loops. So in this first loop, I can write the uh, group is A H A H B C D A. So this is the first loop. So in this first loop, this is the direction of the loop. You can take uh, you can take some direction of the direction of the loop. So along the direction of the loop, I'll connect the I'll connect the voltage drops. So from here to here there's a drop of 30 into I1 because along the direction of the current in a resistor there'll be a voltage drop. So this is the current direction.
current is flowing like this. My loop direction is this way, so I'm, I'm going this way. So along the direction of the loop, there is a voltage drop. So it'll be 30 into I1, plus 30 I1. Okay. And here, there is a voltage rise. So it is minus 45, because I'm collecting the drops. It's minus 45. And the current here is flowing. This I3 current is flowing this way. I think this is the current I3. So I'm going along the direction of current, so there will be a voltage drop. This is the loop direction. So I'm going towards along the direction of the loop. So there is a drop of I3 to 1. So since the drop, I'm putting plus sign. And it is 40 ohms. Again, I'm going the direction of the current. So there will be a voltage drop. So that drop is 40 I3. After that, I'm closing the loop. I started from this point, come up to here, and this point is same as this point. And I can go, go up to here. So I to close the loop. So what is drop along the loop, I have to add them up. And if there is a rise means, I have to put the negative sign. Okay. Similarly, I can write the input for the second loop also. Okay. And uh, if you do that, you get the second equation. I can also consider this as a loop. Any closed path is a loop. Okay. So I can consider even this as my third loop. Okay. It will turn out, see if I write the loop in the second loop, I get the second equation. And you can figure out in this form there are three variables i1, i2, i3. So if there are three equations, I can solve the problem. This is the first equation, and second equation is got from the first loop. And second equation, I'll get from the second loop. So I have three equations and three unknowns, so I'll be able to solve it. Writing the loop rule here will give me a fourth equation, which actually is not an independent equation. If I add this equation for the whatever relation I got for the first loop and the second loop, and if I add them up, I'll get this relation I got from the third loop. So it's not a, actually a like junction rule applied at two points, right? This point. Okay, and also this point. The term will be exactly the same. It's not an independent equation. Similarly, if I, uh, here there are two loops. Actually, there are two independent loops. This third loop is, I can consider as a loop dependent on the first two. Either I can take the first loop and the third loop as two my two equations, or I can take the first loop. This is my first loop. One. And this is my second loop, the bottom one. And I can take the outer one as the third loop. So I can solve this question by taking loop number one and two and this junction rule, three equations. Or I can take the equation I get by using loop one and loop three and the junction equation or two and three. And uh, so basically what I'm saying is this is one independent equation. This one and second and third, I can choose either one and two or two and three or three and one. Any questions? We'll stop now. Just a minute, let me take a snap. Don't go. This is actually given in the book. Okay, so you can read the book. Loop rule. I give it some of the potential. They have put change potential. I have taken voltage drops. Okay, so any question? You can close if you don't have any doubts. Shall we close? 
हाँ ओके बाय